about 13 years old. This teacher, she kept me in the classroom about two thirds of the time because Pause I'd it. use the rest of the just said there? I had no idea. Kept him this in the teacher. <laughs> see, he's he got shot in the mouth. Yeah. So the roof of his mouth is probably not, you know, which is why he can't pronun- pronounce yeah. words appropriately. Probably, yes. Yeah. 2020, as we all know, has been a horrible year. Pandemics, politics, all of it, right? Um, but we've managed to have some good moments. But I also want to share this. If you feel like maybe you are not doing so well in life, if you feel like it's been a crappy year and um, nobody loves you and you're feeling all sad for yourself, I want you to know there are worse people out there. <laughs> and, uh, well, one of my distant relatives, Roy Reap. I mean, he's a Reap. He's got to be kin to you, right? Yeah, well, That's yeah, spelled the same way. Uh, yeah, somewhere I down the line. Yeah, he's somewhere down the line, we got to be related. And he's from not far from where you grew up. Gastonia. Yeah. Okay. Back in the day, there was a TV show called Real People, and they featured him on an episode of Real People, and they they called him the world's unluckiest man. So if you think that your your life's not doing so hot right now, and maybe you're unlucky, you just wait till Check you watch. My distant relative, Roy Reap. Let's watch this, the Alan Jackson. Of course, bad luck is different things to different people. To singer Michael Jackson, bad luck would be waking up with a man's voice. To actor Charlie Bronson, bad luck would be waking up good looking. But to a man in Gastonia, North Carolina, it seems bad luck. Right, He's just on. waking Pause up. It real quick. I, I want to Not say long ago. That. It says Gastonia is the pacemaker of, of the, the Piedmont. Piedmont. Have you ever heard that? I Anybody think. ever heard that? The pacemaker of the Piedmont. <laughs> I've never heard that. So we're not the heart. We're not the brain. The pacemaker. <laughs> the pacemaker. We're the thing that you need uh, once you hit a certain age and your heart's done give out. So I guess, That's Gastonia. I guess Gastonia is kind of the middle of is it kind of the middle of the state of North Carolina. I guess. Yeah, Maybe, but you would think kinda. that it would be cooler to say the heart. Heart. Yeah, somebody must have already taken out. <laughs> it's taken the, already. We're not the heart. We're the pace pace bike. We're, we're, we're the heart. thing that keeps the heart beating yeah. steady. Yeah. Gastonia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a hilarious. Otherwise sign. known as Gas House. Gas House. Yes, All right, Alan. I just had to comment on that real quick. Let's continue, shall we? He's just waking up. Not long ago, 72-year-old Roy Reap retired from the Gastonia Fire Department. For his years of faithful service, they gave him a plaque and a custom golf hat. On his modest pension, Roy retired to a quiet trailer park called Beverly Hills. For company, Roy has a brown dog and a black dog that he calls Brown Dog and Black Dog. Brown Dog and Black Dog are so gentle they didn't bother with the last burglar who dropped by. Every morning, Roy starts his day by going to his mailbox and picking up his newspaper, and usually stops by and picks up a part of his car. (laughs) Around this part of North Carolina, Roy is known as Rugged Roy, and Rugged Roy says he could compare his car to his life, which started falling apart when he was three years old. My grandfather had been a detective, and he had those 38 pistol lying in the drawer. My brother, who was going on six, he got a hold of it, and he pointed it towards my face and uh, pulled the trigger. It burnt my eyes shut and my mouth shut. It knocked out about half of my jawbone and it had gone up through the roof of my mouth and they didn't know where it had gone to. So uh, I got along pretty good. And never found when I was bullet. about 10 Lager. years yeah. old, I was lying behind the stove one night and my father came in swinging his ax and he split the top of my head open. <laughs> Do you want to feel the top of my head where my scar is? No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Things went along pretty good until I was about 13 years old. This teacher, she kept me in the classroom about two thirds of the time because Pause I'd it. used three you know what he just said there? I had no idea. Kept him in this the... This teacher, <laughs> see, he's, he got shot in the mouth. Yeah. So the roof of his mouth is probably not, you know, which is why he can't pronu- pronounce yeah. words appropriately. Probably, yes. Yeah. Right so he's kind of got like a hair limp thing going on. Like what did that. he say? I don't know. It's something about a teacher. 
Uh, and let's try and figure that out. Let's play. Yeah, look. What did he say? Play it again. Oh no, no, that's okay. <laughs> Things went along pretty good until I was about 13 years old. This teacher, she kept me in the culture room about two thirds of the time because I She kept me culture in the room, but two thirds of the culture. time. Mick, Mick Ultra? I think that's what he said. I don't know. I still don't. <laughs> Isaiah, say. what did he say? Do you have any I idea? I have no clue, because in that moment, he sounds like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Like, I can't understand a word that he's saying. Man, I'd love to hear it. I would pay anything. I, I'm sure that Roy Reap has passed away, because this is an old yeah, this video. Is, I did hear two-thirds, though. I heard two-thirds, but I would give yeah. anything to have a conversation, to hear a conversation between Isaiah and Roy Reap. Oh, Lord. Yeah. We'll be trying to decipher Oh, uh, no, that would be is. like. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can figure it out. Poor guy. Things went along pretty good until I was about 13 years old. This teacher, she kept me in the classroom about two thirds of the time because I'd use three or four handkerchiefs a day. They x-rayed my face and uh, they found a baby tooth growing in one nostril and they found a dead one in the other nostril. Things went along pretty good until we got to Lexington and had a wreck. Dr. Roberts and Dr. Charlie Glenn informed me that I had a compound fracture of the pelvis bone, my hip bones broken, my kidneys punctured, my bladder bursted. I lost my car and everything, I was in debt. I came home one morning and uh, my plate fell down in my mouth mm. and I went to Dr. Borshak. I said, Doctor, I said, uh, every time I drink something, I said, it squirts out my nose. Roy's had almost as many different doctors as he's had problems, and in some cases, he says, the doctor was the problem. And I started having trouble with my eyes. Mm, poor guy. And anyway, I went to Dr. Eves, and he uh, performed surgery on one eye, so I've been blind in that eye ever since. Have you ever had any luck with women? That was later. I'm coming to that in a few minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, Don't get ahead um, of the story, buddy. This doctor uptown, he fluoroscoped my throat, and he found this bullet in my throat. Oh, he found the best bullet. And it's bullet. still in there. But he said, and Dr. Clinton said it was as flat as a dime in my throat between that main bone and my neck and an artery. Oh, man. Roy also had a second bullet in his body, which was put there by his second wife. She was a wonderful worker, but she just, well, she felt like that she couldn't leave drink alone. She let these two men persuaded one night to come in on me before I went to work and shot me through the chest and through the arm. Oh my gosh. Why? One man told us, said, uh, uh, you go ahead and shoot him and we'll live in this house. <laughs> and years later, I felt something in my chest. And uh, I went to Dr. Tyner and he froze that thing and took his scalpel and, and slid it and cut it open. And there was that little copper bullet, and they took it out. They sent my wife to prison. And when Ooh. she came back, why, uh, I took her back, but she died. But I wish I'd have taken her back. He took her back, but she died. She I tried to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> she went to prison. She got out. He said, oh, I forgive you. Yeah, and she died. Still love you. But I wish I'd have been taking notes at all the things that's happened to him. It's like it's horrible, horrible. I yeah. can't keep up. It's he's been shot twice, once by his little brother when he was a kid, and then once by his second wife. Yeah, and he's been hit in the head with an axe. Hit in the head with an axe. His eyes are bad. He was in a car wreck. Ruptured his uh, his liver and his kidneys. kidneys. Um, um, what else? His car falls apart. Yeah, he lives in Beverly Hills. Did you notice that? I like that. Beverly Hills trailer Beverly Hills home. Park. Yeah. All right, let's see how see if it gets any worse. Let's continue this. I'm fascinated. I was on the railroad track, and I was going up the railroad track one day, and I looked down, and there was a ten dollar bill lying in this dish. <laughs> okay, sorry, and Alan. I reached Back it up a little bit. He said, "Has any? Have you ever had any good luck?" Mm -hmm. And then this is his response. Why? Uh, I took her back, but she died. Have you ever had any good luck? We lived down on the railroad track, and I was going up the railroad track one day, and I looked down, and there was a $10 bill lying in this ditch. And I reached down to pick it up, and the center tore out of it. The center tore out of it. You want a black <laughs> cat? I had two very big, beautiful black cats, and uh, they got gone. I don't even know what happened to them. 
Even though his black cats ran off, Roy's luck got worse. My feet, they started breaking out. And I went to this doctor and he, he said that I had dermatitis in my legs. Word of how rugged Roy was surviving all his hard luck eventually reached the editors of the Guinness Book of Records mm. who were interested in including him in an upcoming edition as one of the world's unluckiest humans. <laughs> the letter, dated over three years ago, said they would contact him. But they never have. <laughs> Roy has accepted of his fate. Yeah. That would be too lucky for him. That would be good luck. That would be something that might give him a little bit of joy. Or like, oh, guess what? Yeah, I think they pay you too. I bit. made it. Yeah, like yeah. you get a plaque or whatever. But they never they, contact. No, no, that's truly unlucky. That, that stays with too the too much good luck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, rugged Roy. Luckily, only once did he ever express anger at God or his fellow man for his lot in life, and that's when he once worked for a bakery. We were working on the uh, table one morning, making uh, cinnamon buns. And this boss man, he kept uh, having this boy to pick at me. And I walked up to the wall, and I stuck that wall as hard as I could. When was the last time you had a serious uh, relationship with a woman? Well, <laughs> actually, uh, last week. <laughs> but let's put it like this. If, if I do something for somebody and she wants to do something for me, I, I feel like turn about is fair play. What did she do for you? Hmm. She went to bed with me. <laughs> so, wow. he even, he yeah. says, I mean, wow. Yeah. He even has to pay. That's basically for what he's saying. A girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, uh, also known as prostitution. Pretty much. <laughs> right. He's basically saying, like, well, if somebody wants to do something nice for me and I want to do something nice for them, that's turnabout fair, fair play. play. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good old transaction. Yeah. Oldest business there is. All right, let's, let's hear what he, how he describes it. Wow. When she needs money and cigarettes and things like that, well, I take them to her. How old was the woman last week? 28 years old. This week, maybe Roy's luck was changing because while he was telling us about his girlfriend, the phone rang. She was calling to say it was time for more turnabout as fair play. As far as Roy was concerned, the interview was over. Roy busied himself straightening up the kitchen, the front room, and himself. After about 45 minutes, though, the phone rang again. His girlfriend had called to cancel their date because her other boyfriend had come home. Actually, she's living with another guy now, see. Once again, it was only Lady Luck who had given it to Roy. So, as usual, Roy contented himself to stay home and watch the news. Since his life is such a catalog of disasters, it makes him feel better to know others didn't have such a good day either. <laughs> this just in, South Carolina authorities say the former mayor of Pageland, South Carolina, was shot to death. A 16-year-old Hawthorne Junior High School student being held under $50,000 bond on rape charges. 18 bags of cocaine were seized and two people were arrested in a raid on on the house last night. An elderly Stanley County woman died in a house fire early this morning. The only luck I've ever had was the fact my mother said before she died, she said, you're just too good for your own good. You're just too, too good, good for, for your, your own good. good. Well, Roy Reap, I hope uh, I hope it turned out better for him what after a life. this. And, uh, just know, uh, if you think that uh, your 2020 was bad, and what as bad as old Roy Reed back in the 80s. So things could be worse. Yeah.